All right, folks, this is gonna be another large scale review. And today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the Blockman Jackson Sharp coaches. And the ones I have here are the Denver and Rio Grande coach and also the matching combine to go with it. And these are the updated Jackson Sharp coaches that Blockman came out with, I think, uh, it's probably been a few years now. But I got these to go with the 120.3260 Mogul that's just up the back here. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and get these open and have a look at them. While I'm unboxing these, something I wanted to discuss real quick is that if you're a regular viewer on this channel and you keep up with the videos I do on large scale stock that I get in, you'll know that I purchased both of these models from Train World. And when I did, there was a bit of an issue in regards to shipping because when I placed my order, both these models were listed on the website as available and in stock. And a few days afterwards, Train World sent me notification that my order had been shipped. And they also included a list of the shipment contents. And both of these models were on that list. But I was a bit surprised to see that another model that I had pre-ordered and apparently wasn't even available yet was also included in the shipment contents. And I was even more surprised when I received the box only to find that one of these models had been sent to me. Uh, further investigation showed that the combine was actually on back order. But uh, personal opinion, I feel that if an item has not been put in the box, then it should not be listed in the shipment contents. And I did a video on that and basically pointed out I felt there was an issue in Train World shipping department and somebody at Train World needed to look into it. And the response that video got was uh, interesting to say the least because there was quite a few people commented about they'd had similar issues with Train World shipping department and they felt there was an issue that maybe needed to be corrected. But then there were other people who basically acted like I was targeting Train World and bashing them for no reason. And I even had, I guess somebody from Train World saw that video too, and I won't go into the details, but they basically said I was stupid and again, felt like I was being unfair towards Train World. And it's like, that was never the intent of that video in the first place. It was just, me pointing out something that I felt was an issue and something that Train World should look into. And, you know, I even said that at the beginning of the video that I had nothing against Train World or anything like that. And I've been a repeat customer with Train World for years. I buy a lot of my large scale stock from them just because I feel they have the best prices. But, you know, people that want to basically pin me as being cruel and unfair towards a retailer when all I did was simply pointed out a problem that somebody should look into. And it's like, you want to see me really have a go at a retailer, uh, go look at my video where I investigated model train closeouts. It's like, I have no negative feelings towards train world whatsoever, except for that one employee that called me stupid. I don't really appreciate that. Well, with the models out of their boxes, I'm really liking the look of these. And I know Bachman's made quite a few updates to these Jackson Sharp coaches compared to the ones they did previously. One of the biggest updates I think they've made is they've converted the lighting in these over to track power instead of battery power like before. And uh, there's quite a few other changes that have been made, but I think we'll go ahead and take a closer look at these. With both models, you get a bag of extra parts, and really the only things included are an extra pair of hook and loop couplers, and these are just for if you want to swap out the knuckle couplers, which are on the units already. But you also get the mounting hardware for installing the hook and loop couplers, and Bachman even provides instructions on how to do so. And lastly, you also get a replacement bulb in case one of the ones in the unit burns out. All right, here's the combine, and something I noticed when I was handling this is that the front of it has not been assembled correctly. You can see there's two plastic tabs. These are supposed to clip into the bottom of the coach, and I cannot get those to go. So I think the problem is that the floor in here has not been positioned correctly, which uh, pretty much the problem stems back to when this was assembled in China. So uh, thank you to whoever didn't do their job. But other than that, the coach looks pretty good. In terms of detail, you know, we've got the sliding doors on both sides here. And there is also interior detail in the passenger compartment, nothing really in the baggage compartment. But we got seats in here. In one corner, there's a wood burning stove. And in the other corner, we got a restroom area. 
going around to the back here, we can see that we got uh, metal handrails or possibly brass. These may even be brass plated, but this was one of the updates Bachman made to these coaches. They gave them metal handrails, which these are not only uh, sturdier than the plastic ones, but they also look nicer in my opinion. Uh, the model also has knuckle couplers. As you saw earlier, uh, hook and loop couplers were provided if you wanted to swap those out. And going around to the other side here, uh, kind of hard to handle this coach with the camera in the way but uh pretty much the same as the other side uh you can see we do have the graphics which look really nice you got the denver and rio grande the u.s mail and even these uh decorative graphics which also there's on the end of the coach as well and going underneath i'm just trying to be careful here so i don't uh scratch this uh there is detail under here but a lot of it is pretty much uh molded but you can see what's all there. Uh, looking at the trucks, you can see we have copper contacts on the metal wheels because as I said before, Bachman updated these to be track powered. And I noticed that we still have uh, this area here, which is where the original battery box mounted. And it looks like we also got a switch, so uh, must still have the option to turn the lights on and off if you so wish. But there's the other truck again, uh, copper contacts on the metal wheels. And I mean, overall, I don't think this combine looks too bad. And like I said, uh, the only issue this model seems to have here is that somebody did not assemble it correctly, but that might be an easy fix. I did manage to fix the floor issue on the front of the combine and it was relatively simple. And I'll go ahead and put up some footage of what I did. Uh, basically just stuck my fingers through the sliding door on the side and pushed on the front of the combine and that allowed the wall to get past the floor there and fall down and for the plastic tabs on the bottom to clip in place. So, you know, this is back together now. And uh, again, it was relatively easy, but you know, if somebody had assembled it properly in the first place, it wouldn't have had to do that. Now the coach pretty much looks the same as the combine. The only difference is we don't have the baggage area at the front because this is mainly just for transporting passengers. But again, we've got the same amount of detail though. We've got detailed interior. We've got metal handrails and metal wheels as well as power pickups underneath. Then we've also got the nice looking graphics. These ones are slightly different because again, it's a coach and not a combine. But I mean, I'm really liking the look of this model and I'm really looking forward to getting these on the track and running them. I got out my train power 10 to show the lights on these passenger cars. And with the lights on, they really do look impressive. But you can also see the interior detail better now. You can see that there's seats in there and also the wood stove in the corner and the restroom area in the opposite corner. And the coach looks even more impressive with all the seating in there. And again, you get towards the back, you got the wood stove in the restroom. And I mean, I'm just really impressed with the way these are looking. I've turned out all the lights and I'm really impressed with all the light coming off of these passenger cars. Unfortunately, the video doesn't do it justice, but it's really neat how the shadows are casting down onto the workbench. And I think these would look really impressive if you got them out like running at night on your garden railroad. Uh, really impressive effect these cars have. Something that kind of bothers me with these passenger cars is that because of the way those copper contacts brush against the wheels, I noticed that there's a bit of resistance in the way these cars roll. And I'm kind of wondering what kind of an effect that's gonna have on the model that's pulling them. But if I stop talking here for a second as well, you'll notice there's quite a bit of noise coming from these as they roll. And I normally wait till the end of the video to do the running footage, but I think I'm gonna give these models a test run because I'm curious how they sound. All right, we're out on the back deck and I've got a track set up here and I'll also be using my Davenport to give the coaches a test run. I've chose this just because it's one of my quieter models. All right, gonna give this some throttle and see how these coaches run. So as the train runs around here, I am noticing some squeaking from the coaches, 
and I'm also noticing that the Davenport is having a bit of trouble pulling these. Uh, there's quite a bit of wheel slip which indicates drag from the coaches and I assume that's caused by the copper contacts which are on the wheels. And granted this is a smaller model but it does have a bit of weight to it. Also these are 8 foot diameter curves and I'd assume the drag is going to be worse on 4 foot diameter curves. I've come back into the workshop and what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to apply a little bit of oil to the contacts on these coaches and hopefully that eliminates the drag and the squeaking and helps to improve performance. Just to show you all how I do this real quick, just got a little bit of oil on the end of a toothpick and just carefully put it on the contact there and roll the wheel around. And one thing to keep in mind is you don't want to use a lot of oil for this, I think. Okay, we're back outside again. And I can see that the Davenport is now having an easier time pulling these coaches around. And there's also no squeaking anymore. So that's definitely a positive. And I remember it was the YouTuber Jim Zim. He got himself some of these Jackson Sharp coaches. And he mentioned about they had a problem with the wheels squeaking really bad. So uh, a little bit of oil seems to fix that. And anyone else that's had that problem, now you know the solution to it. So here's a comparison of the old Jackson Sharp coach up against the new one and you can probably see that these coaches are pretty much the same in terms of design. The only difference being some of the upgrades which were afforded to the newer version. But the old one here has plastic handrails which I don't think these look as nice. They're flimsy. This one has uh, slightly misshapen over time. And the newer one, these metal handrails, they look a lot nicer, they're sturdier, and I honestly feel like they'll last longer. But the older Jackson Sharp coaches, these were powered by a 9-volt battery uh, mounted just under the coach here. You can see the battery pack, and if I reach in here and flick the switch, you will see that uh, the lights come on. And I'm thinking the battery might be about dead with these, uh, but... I don't know, I just don't care for the battery powered lighting. I prefer the track powered lighting like we have in this coach. And I honestly feel like the only reason Bachman went with battery powered lighting on these coaches in the first place was just because these were included in the big hauler sets and those sets came with a one amp uh, controller. And I just don't think they had enough power to run both the lights in two passenger cars and the sound and smoke and lights in the locomotive. But, I mean, personally, I say that these newer Jackson Sharp coaches are definitely an upgrade. Now, when it comes to the cost of these models, I paid $83.99 a piece for them. You might as well call that $84. However, I had another $10 shipping into the combine, being that was back ordered. So, in the end, you might as well say I had basically $94 a piece into these models. But, ignoring the extra shipping cost, I think... $84 is a reasonable price for these, especially when you consider Bachman's retail price is closer to $150. And, you know, again, considering I only paid about $84, I saved about $70 buying these from Train World. Speaking of Train World, like with any order you place from them, they always send along some catalogs and brochures with your order. And I've shown some of these in other reviews, so I won't spend too much time on them. But there's a couple things here for text and email alerts on sales. Uh, here's uh, two of their catalogs they always send along. Something here for some new models coming from Pico in HO scale. And they also sent along a Pico 2021 catalog. I really can't show everything here because, I mean, it just drag out too long in the video. But uh, yeah, a lot of stuff there. And lastly, they sent along a new items for 2021 catalog from Pico. And again, some really great stuff in here as well. Well, this review has been a bit of a long one, but with all things considered, I personally feel these models are well worth getting, especially if you're looking for a nice set of Jackson Sharp coaches on your indoor or outdoor large scale railroad. And Bachman does have other road names available. 
I just got the Denver and Rio Grande ones because I got the Raton up the back here, which this model actually has the freight livery, but again, I feel these models look pretty good. I like the updates Bachman made with the metal handrails and the lighting being track powered. Although if I had to criticize these for something, it would definitely have to be those contacts on the wheels. I personally feel like if Bachman had gone ahead and uh, designed the axles to where the contacts would rub on those, I feel it would have worked better and you wouldn't have the rolling resistance or the squeaking problems that I encountered. But I did show that a little bit of lubrication will fix that. So in all, I'd have to say if I was going to rate these models, I'd probably give them an 8 out of 10. Like I said, they look good. It's just they got a couple issues when it comes to uh, running. But uh, that's going to be it for now. Uh, let me know your thoughts on these models in the comments down below. I want to get these outside and run them again.